first let me introduce to you who American Superconductor is. Um, we sometimes have a split personality in that we also refer to ourselves as AMSC, which stands for American Superconductor. It's also our, truck, our stock trading symbol as well. Um, but uh, that's what AMSC means in those slides, the American Superconductor. As far as the smart grid is concerned, American Superconductor um, uh, very much is involved in the strong part of the grid as compared, well, in addition to the smart part of the grid, but the, the strong part in particular. The smart grid is not only the smarts, the microprocessors, the communication, the smart metering, but it is also the brawn of the strength, the transmission system um, uh, of the grid as well. Um, intelligent metering doesn't do anything if there's not enough power to, uh, to go from the sources of generation to where it's needed. Um, so the, the strong transmission network is, is very much required to reliably get large amounts of today, renewable energy to where it's needed. Um, AMSC is very heavily involved in planning, systems, research, development um, in, in many different areas. We have three primary focuses within the company. The first area is in what we call FACTS devices. These stand for Flexible AC Transmission System Devices. These are power, these are power electronic based systems that are used on the transmission grid and provide real-time voltage control. We'll talk about those more in a moment. Um, mo the, mo the most direct impact to China right now is our renewable uh, generation uh, operations. American Superconductor is the world's leading licensor of wind turbine designs. We uh, design wind turbines and uh, license these designs to manufacturers that wish to get into the business of building wind turbines. Uh, we provide the designs of the wind turbines, we help them set up their factories, we provide, uh, um, uh, we pre-negotiate critical supply contracts for critical components, we train the factory and the service personnel, and we also supply the entire electrical system for the wind turbines that are built by these licensees. You'll see underneath the picture of that wind turbine there that we have uh, four Chinese company logos. Uh, these are our four uh, licensees in China. Uh, one of them, uh, Cinebo, which is in the upper left-hand corner, uh, by the end of this year will probably be the uh, fifth largest wind turbine manufacturer in the world. And we are very, very proud to say that they are one of our, uh, one of our partners. Um, in this regard, we also uh, constructed a manufacturing plant outside of uh, uh, Shanghai a few years ago to manufacture the electrical systems for use in the turbines by these, uh, by these manufacturers. We are also involved in advanced transmission, uh, in particular superconductor cables, which I will talk about a little bit uh, later in my presentation. Next slide, please. So the question of the strong and smart grid um, and are the high capacity transmission lines that are being built in China now a good investment for China? Well, renewable energy, of course, is a very good investment for China as well as for the entire world. And high capacity lines are required to get that energy to where the demand of uh, the electrical use is, is required. So it's not a sure win, it is a must do type of an investment that China must undertake in building very high capacity transmission lines to get this power to market. On the flip side, the United States has a very similar problem. Um, in the United States and uh, North America in general, most of the sources of renewable energy are in the middle part of the country or the southwest part of the country. Uh, in Canada, it's in the middle part uh, of uh, Canada which is generally where the population density is the lowest. Very, you know, it, it's a similar situation to China where the, the strongest winds are in Mongolia, but the highest electrical demand is along the, uh, uh, the East Coast. So the United States also has the challenge of getting this renewable energy collected and delivering it to market, which are generally along the coasts uh, in the United States. Um, we have to take a slightly different approach. Uh, we congratulate very much uh, um, the state grid of uh, China in uh, developing uh, and successfully deploying the first 1,000 kV transmission line uh, uh, for commercial operation that is, a, that is a true technological achievement. Um, that probably will not be uh, a technology that will be easily deployed in the United States because of very um, uh, vocal public opposition even to lower voltage transmission line construction in the United States. It's very difficult to get high voltage lines built in the U.S. 
Um, so getting a high voltage or a high capacity transmission grid in the US is going to require some very some other changes. It will require um, uh, some changes in legislation, but possibly some other technologies, such as the use of superconductor cables. So when you look at shore wind investments and what uh, American Superconductor is involved in with the, uh, with the uh, smart grid, uh, the smart transmission system, and, and, and uh, uh, shore wind investments, uh, we have a lot of expertise in enhancing transmission. We can, uh, our fax devices optimize uh, assets, uh, optimize the transmission system and help it operate more efficiently. And because they operate in real time, they're controllable um, by um, uh, uh, remote uh, operation uh, uh, networks. They also have the ability to help the network respond very quickly and recover very quickly or instantaneously to major outages or, or faults. Um, Superconductor uh, based equipment such as AC and DC cables, fault current limiters and wind turbine generators are the next step in the next generation of what we're working towards for the smart grid. Next slide, please. Um, if you look at superconductors, uh, 20 years ago when high temperature superconductors, these are ones that uh, could be cooled relatively cost effectively with liquid nitrogen as compared to uh, um, uh, with liquid helium, which is very expensive and not practical for power applications. Um, nobody really thought this day would actually come, but today we are on the verge of actually deploying AC superconductor cables, which have very, very high capacity and are easier to site in urban applications. Uh, they also have built-in fault current limiting capabilities. So when there's a fault on the power system, the cable can actually limit the amount of fault current that flows, which helps the, uh, the system to grow without having to uh, rebuild much of the system. DC cables is the newest technology. Um, these uh, superconductor cables utilizing DC power have the ability of moving thousands of megawatts, gigawatts worth of power for thousands of kilometers with much lower losses than any other technology that exists um, uh, in the world today. Um, this is truly the future for long distance high power uh, transmission being underground, requiring only one meter right of way to move as much as 20 gigawatts. That's 20,000 megawatts of power in a one meter right of way underground for as long as you wish um, for with losses that are only 25% that of the most efficient other type of transmission technology available today. We are very proud to say that um, two weeks ago, the first project was announced in the United States. It's a small project from a cable standpoint, but a very significant one from the U.S. grid standpoint that will actually use superconductor DC cables as part of the transmission system. And it will initially be rated at 5,000 megawatts, uh, this project that will be located in the state of New Mexico. We are very excited about that. We are also in the process of developing wind turbines that have superconductor generators in them. This will dramatically reduce the weight of the nacelle, that is the part of the wind turbine that sits at the top of the, uh, of the tower, enabling very high power um, offshore wind turbines in particular, but also land-based turbines. Um, manufacturing the generator with superconductors instead of conventional copper-based technology can reduce the weight of the nacelle by up to 300 tons, which dramatically simplifies the construction of the tower as well as the manufacturing process or the uh, installation process, particularly when you consider it uh, being done offshore. So American Superconductor is, is very sure that superconductors are going to be a part of the smart grid of the future. We have uh, already initiated some discussions with the state grid of China uh, in terms of initial superconductor cable deployments around the Beijing area. We look forward very much to having that become a success. Um,